Welcome to today's webinar on setting up and using Facebook for lawn care companies. This is going to be a mini webinar, about 20 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of question and answer. Uh, this is me. I'm your host over on the right. Um, I do the marketing here at Holganix. You're welcome to reach out to me via email, and at the bottom you also have my extension. If you have any additional questions after the webinar that we don't cover, or they hit you after the webinar and you forgot to ask them then, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help. So today's agenda is going to cover three different aspects when it comes to setting up and using Facebook. The first is actually setting up the Facebook page. The second is building out a content calendar. I'm a huge advocate for planning. And the third is posting when or when, uh, what, and how. So why social media? Why should you even be paying attention to social media for your brand and for your company? Well, um, there's three huge benefits to using social media. And in today's webinar, we're going to be covering Facebook in specific. The first is brand awareness. It's a little bit difficult to figure out what your ROI is on brand awareness. And I get that that can be kind of troublesome when you're uh, trying to dedicate certain dollars to create sales for your business, to create revenue. Um, but social media is a great tool to be promoting your brand and to be building that awareness. The second reason why I would pay attention to social media is the fact that it's an excellent customer service and engagement tool. It'll allow you to answer questions of your different customers, um, address any questions, concerns. Um, people will be rating you on the Facebook page, which will provide uh, validation to any prospects that may be looking at your company. And the third reason why I'd pay attention to social media is the fact that it can be a powerful lead generation tool. When it comes to setting up your Facebook page, I just want to point out a couple um, key things to consider. The profile picture. Your profile picture is the first impression that your um, customers and your prospects are going to have of your of your company. So make sure that it's recognizable as an example of logo as an extremely popular thing to use for your profile picture. It should be 180 by 180 pixels. Your cover photo. This isn't going to be the first impression, but it is a space to show your identity and it should be both visually appealing and simple. We're going to look at some examples in a little bit. And it should be 851 by 315 pixels. Your short description. In the About Us, that's where you get to really shine. You get to point out what makes your company different from the competition. So be sure to fill that out. You can select your own username so that, as an example, you can be www.facebook.com backslash organics or what have you. Um, and so definitely pay attention to setting up that username. It'll allow you to link better. And the last item I want to cover is the call to action button feature that Facebook uh, started allowing us to do probably a year or two ago. And that's actually this button here is contact us. Make sure that it is uh, active or that it's leading to the appropriate thing. It could be leading to a form on your website. It doesn't have to be um, a con like a traditional contact us with a phone number. These are two examples of two companies that happen to use Holganix that have excellent, what I consider to be excellent um, Facebook pages. The first one up here is Pure Turf. They're located in Tennessee. You can see he used a high-res version of his logo as his profile picture. And uh, the cover photo is uh, something that's simple. It says what he does, green, weed-free lawn, um, and is visually appealing. The second example down here is the Weed Pro. Uh, they're located in Ohio. And um, this is a high-res uh, logo for their profile picture as well. And they have this cool montage for their cover photo. As you can see, they both have the contact us. And in this picture, I, for some reason, I didn't capture the uh, handle for Pure Turf. But you can see the username uh, down here for Week Pro is at Week Pro. Um, secondly, this. For whatever reason, this is not always expressed when you're talking about setting up a Facebook page, but it's important to merge that Facebook page with your other marketing efforts. Um, so add your social media buttons to your website so that people are being shown, that people can click from your website to Facebook page. 
Um, add your social media buttons to your newsletters and email blasts and add your social media icons, you know, your, your www.facebook.com backslash uh, Holganics or what have you. Or look for us on Facebook or whatever your little call to action wants to be in your print marketing. Whenever you're talking about um, incorporating Facebook or any sort of social media tool, and you're part of a small business, like I imagine what several, what many of you guys are on. Um, you have small teams, there's not a lot of people, you all wear a lot of different hats. And the same is, is true here at Holganics, we all wear a lot of different hats. And so planning for success, building a content calendar, as an example, is extremely crucial to the health of your Facebook page. Um, Scheduling posts, and I'm going to show you a content calendar in a second. Scheduling posts is also extremely important. If you are in the field for a week um, because the dandelions popped and people are going crazy, um, you can be scheduling out those posts in advance. Now, it's important to be working in real time on social media, but don't hesitate to use the, the ability to schedule posts if you don't have someone else in the office that can take over the slack when you need to be in the field or when you're on vacation or something like that. And the third item that I want to point out is the amount of times that uh, you should post per week. Well, there's lots of different numbers out there. and At the end of the day, it's going to depend on what's best for your company. Um, in the past, Hoganix has done about two times per day. Uh, about a quarter ago, I started switching to those two to three times per week after seeing some some new information come out about it. I'm recommending um, to you guys to start off with two to three times per week, and then you can adjust if you think that you should be adding more posts or less posts. Let me show you what the content calendar is. So um, this is just an example of a content calendar. It's a simple month. You um, you can schedule what posts and different campaigns. As an example, maybe you say, I want to, this red coloring here is actually going to be for tree and shrub. I want to talk about tree and shrub when it has this red column. Or I want to do um, pre emergent, you know, talking about weeds and herbicides and what have you when it's a green highlighting. So it just allows you to organize your thoughts. And this is the really cool thing. Um, this allows you to plan it out really in advance to the in detail so that, as an example, if you have an intern in the office, you can create the message, you can put the link in, what time they should post it at, and the image link, and they can go ahead and do it for you. When you're talking about building out posts, visuals are always best. When it comes to Facebook, 2.3 of Facebook posts, um, posts with visuals are 2.3 times, uh, get 2.3 times more engagement than posts that do not have visuals. And posts with visuals account for 87% of total interactions on Facebook. So don't be posting something unless it has an engaging visual alongside it. And a visual could be a picture, it could be a graphic, it could be an infographic, it could be a video even. Just make sure that you're not just um, putting text in your Facebook page posts. And when it comes to visual posts, there's two key resources that you guys can be using that are totally free. Um, the first one is Pixabay. That's actually the second bullet down here. And Pixabay is a, uh, a free stock web uh, photo a photo stock website. Excuse me. Um, that you can be downloading pictures off of Pixabay and incorporating them in your visuals. So definitely check, check out pixabay.com. The second one on there is Canva. Canva allows you to build engaging posts without the help of a graphic designer. Um, so as an example, uh, they do a bunch of different things. Um, uh, in infographics, they have infographic templates that you can use. They have invitation templates. They have um, a Facebook post template, a Twitter post template, a bunch of different templates that you can be playing with on Canva and incorporating those free photos from Pixabay. So as an example, let's just pretend this Twitter post is actually a Facebook post. Uh, you can swap out the pie fruit picture in the background with some green grass. And then in this circle, you could be including your message that you want to deliver. So I would strongly recommend that you check out Canva in order to create professional-looking, beautiful uh, social media posts.
when it comes to the actual content that you should include in your, uh, your social media posts, I have this rule of thirds. A third of your post should be educational pieces created by you. Um, so that might be, that include a link back to your website. So you're driving traffic back to the website. And that could be a blog article, that could be a news uh, article that you have on your website, be an email blast that leads back to your website. Any sort of educational piece of content that's offered, but created, designed by you guys. And educational means that it's not talking about your company per se. Um, an example of an educational piece of content might be, you know, three weeds to look out for in April. Um, it doesn't say buy herbicides for my lawn care company. It says, you know, you should be aware of these three weeds. And maybe at the end of the article it says, oh, and by the way, you could sign up and use this coupon code or what have you. The second third of posts should be actually about you. This is where you get to be a little bit more salesy, but you want to be tastefully salesy. Um, consider using a testimonial or a promo. These are pieces of content that your customers and your prospects want, but um, and they can get from their Facebook page, but it's also salesy at the same time. Um, the third, the, the last third of posts should be educational content from a third party. Uh, for an example, maybe you post an article written by Holganics on, um, soil health and why it matters to the homeowner. This is going to help with your validation and it'll also allow you to mix up your posts a little bit. And the last thing I really want to include here on when it comes to content is please don't summarize your articles. I, I often, or your posts, I often see um, on Facebook pages, people will write two to three paragraphs of content on their Facebook page. You really only want to have one to three sentences on a post and include it with a graphic. If they want to read more about it, they can click on that link and they can be directed back to whatever that article is. Um, they don't want to read two to three paragraphs. Um, it's a very, uh, Facebook has a tendency to move very quickly and people are reading things very quickly. And these are just some tools that some of them we've already talked about, um, others we haven't yet that I'd strongly recommend that you check out. Build our content calendar. I'm going to send you a link to that Excel spreadsheet that I showed you earlier. Maybe that's the content calendar for you. Maybe it's not, and you want to create your own. That's totally fine. But use some sort of planning uh, method. The second one is check out Canva. Going to allow you to use uh, create beautiful posts that look like they were pre professionally created without paying graphic designer. The third item on that list is Pixabay. Free stock photos are on Pixabay. Definitely check them out. The fourth bullet I want to point out is the Holganics launch box. That's going to contain a bunch of different already created articles, social media posts, videos, graphics um, that are designed for you to use and um, to sell to the homeowner. So definitely um, check out that Holganics launch box. And the last item is I'm going to be sending you guys out a, um, a recording of this webinar and the slides from today's webinar. Um, in a follow-up email. So if you want to watch it again, if you want to, you missed um, one of these tools and you just want to jot it down, um, you have the ability to do so in that follow-up. Well, guys, thank you so much uh, for attending today's mini webinar. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I Good luck this spring season. I know a lot of you guys are about to kick it into high gear. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help.